Sasha, thank you so much for coming to tea with me. Um, it's really exciting to see you. Thank you for having me. Would you first like a cup of tea? Yeah, that'd be amazing. Marvellous. No sugar? No sugar. Look at that. Okay. Right, first of all, you've got such an awesome journey. And that's, I'm so pleased to have you in here with us today. So you started off as a dancer and yeah. then to where you are now, you're a nutritionist. And there's such a cool story in between all of that that I just really want to talk about it with you. Um, so talk about how you first started as a dancer and yeah. what kind of happened. Yeah, so um, I was a dancer. I'd, I'd always danced from like age five yeah. onwards. And then um, at about age 16, I decided I wanted to take it uh, as a career and started I went to Lewisham College and then I went to um, Northern Contemporary Dance School um, doing dance and then I got my first job uh, where I kind of went to Asia and I did wow. a six-month tour around Asia doing like different things different types of dancing different Amazing. films and things like that and during that time I kind of got a gut problem so I, I got a parasite basically wow. and it it never got picked up so I was just really unwell for a while and it was about two years before they actually picked up the parasite. So you were living with a parasite in your yeah. gut in your gut yeah. for two years and no and, one knew. And it can happen, but yeah. for me it was causing me a lot of problems. So they were running all the tests under the sun mm. and they never found it because parasites can hide. So what happened? Was it was it causing like to lose weight, gain yeah, weight? What was exactly. the Exactly. So I was losing weight and um at the same time I was really tired all the mm. time. Um, I wasn't really able, I was constantly cutting out foods because I was thinking that was what the problem was. Yeah. And eventually it got to a point where I'd lost so much weight um, and I went into hospital and they diagnosed a parasite, oh. finally found it. Was that back in England? That was in England. Yeah. And that was, it had been two years since that job Blimey. at that point. So I'd actually lost everything that I'd done. So training wise, mm. all my agencies were like, you're going to have to go back into training again. You know, I was so weak mm. that as a dancer, you know, it's well, yeah, just you need not... to keep your strength yeah. up. And, you know, you've it's two not... years of something in your gut like that, wasting it away really at you. It ruined that, my career, essentially. Mm. I, and I wasn't really in a position where I wanted to go back to that. Mm. Um, and then my agencies had kind of started putting me into modelling and things because I wasn't unable to actually dance. And it's not really something I wanted to do, but I kind of just went into it and yeah. went with it because I needed money as well. And um, I'd been treated for the parasite at this point. Mm -hmm. And so I started putting on weight again, which is back to my normal weight, my healthy mm. weight. And in that time... Um, I was on this tour with L'Oreal and I remember it really well <laughs> because it was it was almost like imposter syndrome. I didn't feel like I was meant to be there. I was a dancer. They were all models. Do you know, a lot of people have this imposter syndrome. I get it yeah. all the time. The amount of people that when we meet them, yes. we think, oh, you know, they must be so confident. But so many yeah. people feel exactly the same. I've met exactly people that, that have been working on huge movies and they're still like, oh my God. Like, it, I think it happens to all here? of us sometimes. Yeah. Like a pinky <laughs> moment as well, Literally isn't it? Literally that. Literally that. And I think the thing that hit me the most was all these these models that were so so thin and some of them were doing things like eating baby food oh, wow. and I just remember it so well and I kind of started rubbing off me the idea that I needed to kind of slim down to be the level that they were. Mm. Um, I think from obviously I went to dance school as well I yes. think a lot of the time it's always about your body image you have to be slim to be a dancer you don't have to be now but they, they, it was That's always it when was you're like, in that school yeah, or that environment it's yeah. you know keep thin you're a ballerina or keep you know yeah. keep to this weight you know and to go from that and then straight into the modelling, that's kind of a like a... huge jump as well. Quite a dodgy area. It really was. When and you're seeing people eating baby food. Yes. And, I, and the thing is, I, I, didn't, I started off and I started dieting. Mm. And by the end of it, I developed anorexia. Blimey. And it was so bad that I couldn't do anything. I stopped working. Mm. I moved back to my parents. And I was there for about a year, yeah. um, a year or two with really, really suffering, but didn't actually know myself. So how, how did it come about that, this is your diagnosis? So it was about, like I said, about two years later and I'd got to such a low weight and I actually went into hospital mm. at one point and it wasn't with anorexia that I went in. Um, I had really bad gut problems again. Um, but when I got in there, they were like, she's got anorexia. You know, and I couldn't see because I had body dysmorphia. I didn't yeah. know that that's how I looked. I actually couldn't see it in the mirror. Mm. Um, but it was a really dark time, I'd say. I think so, that's a lot of the problem that I've, when I've met people through my industry of anorexia or yeah. eating disorders in any type, um, they're unaware of how they look. Absolutely. And you know when you see someone who's got really, really severe anorexia, yeah. they look teeny tiny, but they're not seeing the same they thing we're see seeing. See and, it. you know... When I was at theatre school, I had a borderline problem where I was throwing up any sweet tooth things I would eat. And yeah. I would look in the mirror. 
I knew I was small, but there was bits. I was like, well, this bit yeah. needs to go and this bit needs to go. And you just don't see what other people are seeing. And it's quite a scary it's mindset really scary. to have. Really scary. And for me, the turning point was seeing a nutritional therapist who, you know, I've tr- been treated and I'd started to put on a little, a little bit of weight. Mm. And she totally changed my thought process around food. And yeah. she made me think, you know, actually food's really healing. It's something that we all do every day. We eat mm. all day, every day. And actually to not, have a good relationship with food is really difficult. And mm-hmm. I got fascinated with nutrition and I, yeah. I actually went on a three-year course in nutrition, um, not really thinking I'll become a nutritionist at the end of it, yeah. but just for my own knowledge, because I thought my problem is I don't understand nutrition at all. Yeah. So at the end of it, I came out and started, I actually set up my own practice and I started mm-hmm. seeing clients and mostly it was helping people with health issues like gut problems and things like that because that's what I was trained in. Yeah. But then I realised how much everyone that came in to see me had a problem with food, their relationship Mm. with food. And I was like, mental health is so much more important right now than nutrition itself. And together it's powerful. Mm. So I kind of did, I did more courses. I did did some counselling training, um, NLP, life coaching, specialist eating disorder training, spent like 10 grand doing all these courses just so that I could help my clients. Well, what's so amazing about that is you've You've come from a place of where you've experienced it all. So you've got every single tool, not just from knowing personally how it was, but also with your courses, like no one better to talk to really than you, you know, if if you've got going through any of these problems. So you've used something that could have been a real negative in your life and turned into such a positive. And now you're you're blossoming with this amazing business. That's where the passion for it comes from. And I think a lot of people, you know, there's so much out there that talks about the relationship with food, but often the, the problem is that people with eating disorders, the recovery rate's really low mm. and a lot of people never recover. And they yeah. go through their lives living with this really awful body image. They hate the way they look mm. and they spend their whole time thinking about food and how much they weigh. And it, it yeah. really, really takes over their mind. Do you know, I, and I, as I say, I understand it because I kind of borderline went there and I was always on the scales. And yeah. I was always, I was happy at seven yeah. stone. If I went over that, I'd be devastated yeah as I got older I managed to luckily for me I've managed to kind of get rid of any kind of body image food yeah. thoughts I just eat on impulse or when I'm fast. yeah I'm quite happy yeah. with how I look how I eat um but it was that obsession I was like oh my god yeah. I'm seven stone two I've got to lose weight Absolutely. and it, it terrified me it's because, really scary you and know, so many people are going through this every day yeah. and just the drain it took out of me yeah. for that small period of time it must be horrendous for someone over a long period of time to be dealing with that every single day so what you're doing is like so important and so Thank you me. know we're in, a, in an age now where social media is like devastating people because people yeah. are seeing filtered edited images all day every day and then comparing themselves so it's so important for someone like you to be putting your message out and yeah. trying to show a healthy balance between everything and I, I think I it's think, great thank <laughs> you and I think for me like the the big thing is is that understanding getting support is making sure you get support from the right person yeah. because you don't have to have an eating disorder to reach out for support mm-hmm. you know if you if you've got those thoughts that are already there that's the beginning of it yeah. You know, it only gets worse. The, the, mm. the obsession around food and body image only gets worse. And it's it's reaching out to someone who really does understand and not yeah. just someone who is a nutritionist or someone who's a counsellor. Because I find that people need a, it's a holistic health care yeah. for that for that kind of problem. It's not it's not either one or the other. You need you need everything together. It's, it's therapy as well as understanding yeah. about nutrition. And the two together make something that it, it actually contributes to recovery. Mm. And I, I had to go through all this different training to be able to get to this point where I can really yeah. help people. Like, I wish when I was at theatre school or, you know, even in my early 20s, even to up till now, that I'd met someone like you because I was always associating my weight with my worth. Yes. And it was exactly it, it was completely it. insane to think about it now. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're in this society where that is kind of, how people make it's exactly feel. it's exactly that you know if you you're on Instagram and you're following the wrong people for too long mm. ultimately your whole worth does become around about yeah. you know how do I look on that picture or yeah. and I was saying to you you know before that actually there's there's even apps that have that change your whole face and yeah. even on a, on a video now there's an app which changes mm. your whole face and people start believing that that's how they should look yeah you know and they've kind of portrayed that image to everyone yeah so, it, it is frightening and the nice thing about nutrition is what I've learned from myself and what I'm going to learn from you more as yes. we talk is, 
you're actually when you're nourishing from inside out, your yeah. skin's gonna clear up. You're Absolutely. you're not gonna have these issues so no. much. So you're not gonna need to be doing no, this to your face you on an act. You feel better. And also those thoughts actually start to go as mm-hmm. you're nourished. Yeah. So people that are underweight, they have more um, problems with their thoughts mm-hmm. around food and it, and it's the more underweight you get the more body dysmorphia you get so yeah it the problem gets worse and worse which is where it develops into mm-hmm. that eating disorder um, yeah. and you don't have to just be underweight you know we've been talking about obesity our relationship with food is massive you know it's indicated in, in obesity yeah so people One big long spectrum yeah you know when they're the saying other. it's it's just about not looking at things on tv and and all these different messages mm-hmm. we're getting about dieting they're really you know detrimental because actually if you're obese, a lot of the times you've, you've got problems with comfort eating, mm-hmm. binge eating and all of these things which are mental health. You know, there's, yeah. there's reasons why the person's doing it and also lack of understanding. Yeah. You know, what to eat, how often to eat, you know, how to, are you just eating carbohydrates all day, which a lot mm-hmm. of people do, or are you completely eliminating them, which other also people do. Yeah. So there's a lot, there's a lot to know. There's I think. so much to learn. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing that I think is so awesome is during lockdown, yes. you wrote your own snack book, basically. I absolutely did. I love this. Tell me more. I Hello. love it. <laughs> so I realised that people were really struggling with snacking through lockdown and it was coming up a lot. And I kind of already started on the journey with this book before lockdown, yeah. but I just kind of sped it up and I was like, right, I'm going to get it out now because this is when everyone actually needs it. This is making lemons from... <laughs> Making, <laughs> when life gives you lemons, you yes, make lemonade. That's, it. <laughs> that's absolutely it. No, it, it's exactly that. I just thought, you know, I could carry on. I was actually meant to release it in January and there was meant to be more recipes in there. But, mm. you know, I thought, actually, how many snack recipes are you going to make? I, there's books where you've got hundreds of, of recipes and you're kind of lost when you used to open the book and they're not yeah. very good quality. And I just thought, these are tried and tested recipes. All my clients have used and loved them for years. And I put them together. I've got an amazing food photographer that's been involved as well. Mm-hmm. I've put all the nutritional info on there so you can know what you're having and yeah. um, portion size guide to help you understand how much to have and things like that. And it's all plant-based as well. We spoke about this. I'm a vegan, so that makes me happy. I can't wait to try out these recipes. I can't wait for you to try them. So I'm going to um, get that book yeah. ASAP. <laughs> We are going to do a quick fire oh question round. Okay, go on. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you a category of okay. food and drinks. I think that's the most appropriate. Okay, okay. let's go for okay. it. Okay, I'm going to ask you three. Are you ready? Yeah. What is the most consumed manufactured drink in the world? Is it A, tea, B, Coke or C, chocolate? Um, I'm going to go for A. Tea. You are correct. See, that's why you do what you do. <laughs> right, next. What type of pasta has a name meaning little worms? Is it A, spaghetti, B, ravioli, or C, vermicelli? Now, I'm supposed to be an Italian, and I don't think I pronounced that correct. So. <laughs> I think C, vermicelli. You are correct. <laughs> you are correct if that is the correct I'm pronunciation. Sure and the last question. You've got two out of three so far, so you've already won. Okay. Which foul-mouthed chef hosted the Kitchen Nightmares series? Was it A, oh, Marcus Waring, B, Gordon Ramsay, or C, Jamie B, Oliver? Gordon Ramsay. It was indeed Love Gordon that Ramsay, <laughs> that naughty man. Okay, thank you so much for coming in. Thank I can't wait to get a copy me. of your book, and I'm going to talk to you more and more and more about everything because I want you to look after me now. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. My